Pablo, my first question for you is can you just tell everyone the process that you went through to make this film and what it originally started as and what it has become? Um, actually, like, um, I started from poetry, um, like I had a, a collection of uh, several poems and uh, actually that was back in, in 1998 <laughs> and uh, I was trying to, to adapt uh, poetry to the screen and I mm, realized that um, I wasn't going to be able uh, to do it at, at that moment and so um, I went to film school <laughs> and so like uh, four years later um, I took back the original project and uh, I started uh, developing it, tried to just uh, put together all, all the poetry and uh, give it a plot just uh, like the same way that if you have uh, like a music video and uh, you want to, to, to have something to, to back it and you take the lyrics and you build the story around it and uh, so um, I started working on that, made a script for what I thought it would be like a half an hour thing and uh, then developing it, uh, well I managed to get some public funding, I started uh, developing it and then realized that no actually when we made the final uh, uh, minutage, I don't know how you say that, uh, when we made the timing of all the scenes we realized that it was a feature because there was no way we were, we were going to be able to do it under one hour and a half. And uh, so we began a, a process like from 2003, which was when I got first uh, public funding, uh, developing, and then uh, from there the project has taken many, I mean it's a really long pro process, <laughs> and I'm, I, I don't think I can explain it all here. But basically we end up with um, a, a feature length uh, movie, uh, but was really just mm, very halfway post-produced for what I wanted to do. And so um, the production houses that were involved with it uh, kind of were out of their wits and kind of not really interested on in taking the project to where I wanted to take it. Because also they couldn't understand really uh, just what I wanted to do. Because <laughs> there was no available reference for it. Like, say, yeah, I want to make a movie like that. It's like, no, I have never seen a movie like what I wanted to do. So um, basically I ended up being on, on my own together with Eric and uh, the musician and a couple of loyal friends. And yeah, that has been like 12 years. Uh, and uh, the solution we gave to it was to take like scene by scene and make a series of short films. We made an Indiegogo uh, campaign uh, to, crowd, uh, to crowdfund it. <coughs> and uh, well, this is like the first one that is finished. And what do you think about Dogma 95? <laughs> okay, this is, might sound like a well, strange uh, question, but uh, I mean, we were speaking about it because uh, uh, basically um, there's many ways of, uh, of doing cinema and uh, there's people that just want to, you know, uh, really do classic cinema and uh, there's some other people like would say like, no, no, I don't like uh, what the industry is doing, I want to do something that is pure cinema. And the people of Dogma 95, I mean, well, that's on three years, so, they, they made this manifesto, and uh, you know, the, they wanted to reach pure cinema, and they made these 10 articles that a Dogma manifesto, I mean, should, uh, a, manifesto, a Dogma movie should follow these things. And they were all just trying to create a series of restrictions to get to purity, that for me is like uh, putting like uh, you know putting film in a jail. So if you would read these ten articles and you would say like, oh no 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 I want it's exactly the opposite. That would be like the fusion cinema manifesto, <laughs> which I'm not gonna get into it right now. But uh, basically it's just like the idea of like the, the screen is not like. Uh, uh, some glasses that you put on, or just a camera viewfinder, and uh, you just get immersed into another dimension. I mean, that's great for video games, and that's uh, great for virtual reality. But for me, like, uh, the screen is a canvas. It's a space, and we shouldn't limit it. I mean, anything can go in, and it has all this amazing potential that uh, it's, it's uh, barely explored in cinema. It's only like, TV or advertising that use all these really sophisticated ways of working on the screen, but it's to sell you cars and stuff like that, right? So I wanted to do something like, no, I just uh, want to use all, all what we have available, you know, to 
to say something beautiful, to just uh, explore, tell stories and to just uh, um, yeah, make poetry with the screen. Now, uh, who, go ahead, Ed. Uh, how did you start? I mean, visually, I think it's absolutely outstanding. It's so Thank you. It's so beautiful. How did you start? Did you start as a series of collages, paintings, to set the idea of how you were going to get that? Or did you work directly in film? Did you have it in your head how you were going to compose? Um, well, uh, yes and no. I mean, there were some... I mean, basically, the thing is that it's maybe not very obvious when you see this because it's only one out of 20 parts. Mm -hmm. But uh, the story uh, has actually driven a lot of what, uh, you know, and uh, all these pieces, that it also, everything has a meaning really within the story. And if you would watch it several times, you would start identifying the characters and start saying, like, oh, actually, start, you know, figuring out the relationship behind it. So lots of uh, the process just went from the script, uh, which went through lots of rewrites, and actually when working with the actors, also, like, the scenes evolved a lot. And, and definitely when you work in, in a film set and you have, uh, well, you have to build a set and you have to put, uh, there's, not, there's not many images from the, from the set here, I think. Um, yeah, you need to write, to do lots of storyboards and so on. And then let's say that when we had like the main action, uh, we just uh, took a step back and say like, okay, so, now we're going to really build the screen and then started composing and then say like okay this scene means this i need this other complementary image for this and uh, i want that while the audience see him like destroyed like that they realize why is he phoning or why is he trying to reach this girl he's no longer in contact with and there's like images from a time where they were together and so on it's i know it's a bit abstract right now um for this short uh for if, just, if it just conveys the feeling of, uh, you know, the frustration about of trying to reach somebody and how technology uh, sometimes, which is all around us and it's supposed to get us all more connected and sometimes it disconnects us more. Well, that's just a little subject of, of this film, you know, but behind it there's, uh, there's much more. So basically it's just layering and layering and layering and just let the main images uh, just branch out to what it needs. Uh, to really convey the full uh, message. Yeah. Uh, we have time for one more. Go ahead. Um, with the original poetry that you wrote being 17 years old now, uh, I, I guess where does that exist? I, I mean, this has been a good portion of your, I have to imagine, your creative energy over the past almost three decades or two decades now. Does it exist? Uh, do you still have an affinity for that? Does it seem very dated? Does it seem like something that somebody else wrote? Is, does it exist as kind of like the Bible for a TV series where you can reference back to it? Like, how much of that is still present this far down the line? Well, actually, I'm not the writer of the, of the poetry. The, the writer is Jorge Diaz. And uh, uh, he has a hard time with that, actually. Because uh, he has uh, the first uh, collection of poetry was from his first books. And uh, later on, he, he continued writing and so on and so on. So I went back and forth and met up with him and just say like, and he was like, oh, no, no, please, this, this poem, just cut it out. <laughs> so, because <laughs> his aesthetics evolved as well, right? Uh, so, um, yeah, there's, uh, there were many revisions of the script also for this reason. And uh, like this poem, which is like uh, what you say is a found object, right? That the, the font transmission existed. And then the, the only real uh, title that he, the, the poet added was Rain Night. But of course that modifies the way that you read it and, and so on. So, I mean, it's, mm, how do you say, it's postmodern aesthetics in poetry somehow. But um, most of the other, I mean, all the other poetry, it's more like the voice of the poet, really. And uh, yeah, there's, a, there's lots of different changes in aesthetic, but that really fits the project, you know, like the series, we call it from the pages of album. And when you see the full movie, I mean, it, I hope it's really fluid and it just, uh, I mean, it works as a feature. I mean, I can't see the, I can't see the, future, the feature, of course, because I have it, even if it's not fully post-produced. Um, uh, but uh, I think it matches that you can see each of the pages separately and the full album, and it's like you see different photographies, so, right? Okay. All right, well, here it is.